Greetings, it's July 24th and things looked quite a bit calmer overnight. There was some eastward movement on a lot of the fire zones. Uh, I did get a notice uh, from NASA's firm's system on their fire email alert. Uh, there was a hot spot that showed up north of the chasm. A uh, little difficult to see on this, so I've highlighted it. And chances are that is from around Cunningham Lake on the Flat Lake fire line on their southern flank. Looking at the wind, it was quite calm at uh, about 7.30 a.m. That'll be picking up now. Uh, some of those light green patches in the center of the province, they'll be uh, becoming a little brighter as uh, the sun comes out and winds pick up. We're looking at the forecast for around the Spences Bridge area. The fire to the south of them has made some movements east and to the northeast. We're seeing gusts in the afternoons, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, uh, peaking at about 5 p.m. They could go as high as 50 kilometers an hour coming from the southwest. Then in the evening when it cools down, those winds might shift a bit and start coming from the southeast. We're looking at an image from yesterday. This is heat detections south of Spence's Bridge, east of the Thompson River. Now we're moving into the heat detections that came in last night. Let's take a look at that again. Uh, this is yesterday and notice that the southern flank and the northern flank separate. And here's today. Very odd pattern. Uh, they moved apart the two different flanks. So uh, expansion on both the south and north. Also, on the right-hand side of the screen, it looks like uh, there may be some heat detections moving into that valley and potentially towards the other uh, mountains to the east. Here we are looking at the northern flank. Spence's Bridge is at the top of the screen and rolling into today. Looking at the scale on the lower left, it appears to be about a three kilometer move. If I was driving south on Highway 8 from Spence's Bridge, I'd say it was about the second or third bend in the road that the uh, fire line on this infrared appears to have reached. It'll be important to monitor this fire if you're in the area, especially with this potential for south winds and gusts coming in uh, later in the afternoon. Uh, check with BC Wildfire. The links are in the description below and find out what their uh, recommendations are and what the status of the fire is. We're going to jump all the way down to the South Okanagan right now. We're looking at uh, the Oliver Osuyas fire uh, that's east of Oliver and uh, moving eastward from Osuyas into these forested blocks on a direction sort of towards the Mount Baldy ski area. We'll zoom in and take a look at that movement. This is infrared from yesterday, the accumulated uh, satellite data, and now today. And definitely see uh, expansion eastward on all of those fire pockets. Zooming into East Osuyas now, looking at the bend in the Crow's Nest Highway in the lower portion of the screen. This is yesterday's and today. So some movement east at that lower portion. This is the northern flank of the fire. We're looking at yesterday's infrared. Oliver is on the left hand portion of the screen and this is today's. So less infrared showing up close to Oliver and movement towards the east. This is the central area of that fire zone. Uh, we're looking for movement eastward. This is yesterday's heat detections and today's. So definitely moving into the timber in an eastward direction. Let's go north now. This is the fire up at White Rock Lake. We're west of Vernon and southeast of Kamloops. Uh, we were looking for expansion northward. Uh, there was a lot of southwest winds pushing this. This is yesterday's infrared and today's. Uh, very subtle movement. Uh, no 
really detectable movement northward, but it is in that forested block to the north side of that valley. Just above is Highway 97 and Monte Lake, so uh, one to watch for with increased gusts in the afternoon. We're moving west to the Tremont Creek Fire. That's uh, the Thompson River at the upper portion of the screen, uh, along with Highway 1, Barnes Lake, and Ashcroft are to the left-hand side of the screen. Winds had shifted a little bit yesterday and started coming from the northwest, so we're looking at yesterday's and now today's heat detections. Definitely busy on the southern flank and moving eastward slightly. This is another area to watch for with uh, difficult terrain and the large forested block to the east which could become fuel. We're crossing the highway and the Thompson River heading northeastwards. This is up near the Bonaparte. Uh, we're looking for a change in infrared and yes we do see some expansion northeastward and eastward in the area around Young Lake and down to the bottom there where Chris Creek is. And this is the same sort of movement that we're seeing in a lot of fire zones uh, that creep eastwards on those uh, southwestern breezes. Except when we move up to Flat Lake, which is just a short distance to the northwest, but here winds have look to come from the north and the northwest more predominantly. Uh, we're looking at yesterday's infrared and now rolling into today. Definitely busier on the north and western flanks. There's still a couple spots on that infrastructure line over on the east right hand portion of the screen. Uh, looking at the southern flank, this is yesterday's infrared and now today's infrared some movement southwards and i think this is what popped up on my uh, fire alert that i got from nasa's firm system first thing in the morning we can see there has been an approach towards the east side of cunningham lake and those virs appear to have made southward movement I did read a report that crews are on site to uh, deal with these little expansions as they pop up. We've jumped over to the Shushwap to Sycamus and the area southeast of Sycamus uh, where fire broke out and moved up the hillside. This is yesterday and now today. So again, more of that slight eastward movement uh, pushing to the southeast, the east on this fire flank. Busy activity on that side of the fire. Not very much activity showing up on the western flank closer to Merrill Lake or Sycamus. We're just going to move southeast. This is towards Merrill Lake and Sugar Lake. Looking at infrared from yesterday and now today. Seeing that expansion to the northeast and the east. A uh, little busier, a little uh, brighter color coming out of these heat detections. But I think you have to almost strain to see it. Uh, there's not any great breakouts or um, fast moving fire in this region. Now we've moved to the southeast southern portion of the province. We're looking at the area around Arrow Lake on the left hand side of the screen. Nelson and the fires in the Kootenays are to the right hand portion of the screen rolling into today. Around Arrow Lakes, it looks like it's glowing a little bit hotter. There was a reduction in the infrared uh, north of Nelson. Uh, it's difficult to say. Uh, we've got multiple satellite systems displaying at this time, so they can overlap and make the data look thicker than it really is. The fires around Lower Arrow Lake did look like they expanded slightly almost in all directions. And these subtle breezes may have played a factor. Here we're looking east of Lower Arrow Lake from the south at two kilometers an hour. And then if we go over to the western side of the lake, it's coming from the north at one kilometer an hour. So these breezes are giving some gentle persuasion in all directions. Overall, the wind was quite calm. This will be picking up uh, as the day warms up and that band in the center of the screen running diagonal from left to right uh, will increase in wind speed, uh, mainly coming from the southwest. 
but there will be these pockets where the wind curls back, like the Oliver Osuis area where winds are coming from the northwest at 4 kilometers an hour. North of Kamloops, around the Hefley Lake area, it's coming from the southwest at 3 kilometers an hour. Close to Lytton and uh, south of Spence's Bridge, the wind is coming from the south at 3 kilometers an hour. There may be increasing gusts there in the afternoon, peaking at about 5 p.m. And close to the chasm, wind is coming from the southeast, one kilometer an hour. Uh, that's barely detectable. So winds are just kind of meandering, shifting around until breezes pick up in the afternoon. Hopefully they'll be calm in your area with enough wind movement to maybe clear some of that smoke and haze that might be accumulating in the lower parts and the valleys. And there may be fairly steady southwest winds, uh, especially at higher elevations. If you're up at uh, the summit near Panask or along the Coquihalla, be wary of those southwest winds uh, coming in the late afternoon around between 3 and 5 p.m. Uh, could have gusts upwards of 40 kilometers an hour. And then winds may shift in the evening and start coming from the southeast. It's definitely been a bit calmer in areas, but uh, to be cliche, we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, it's still wildfire season, so uh, check with the resources in the links below, BC Wildfire, Drive BC, if you're traveling anywhere. And uh, do check up on friends and relatives, and uh, play it safe. Keep your nose to the breeze.